how do you prioritise when everything is a priority? Now, the poet John Lydgate once said a very prophetic line. You can please some of the people all of the time. You can please all of the people some of the time, but you can't please all of the people all of the time. Although he lived over 500 years ago, this quote is very apt when we think about prioritising our work and creating our product backlog. But do you even need a product backlog? What would happen if you deleted it? Well, we'll get into that a bit later on. For now, let's talk about it. It often feels like we have too much work to do with tight deadlines and not enough time or people to get it all done. Now, this can lead to stress, fatigue and a lack of well-being. The thing to realise is that we are always going to have a constant stream of high priority work and we need to try and accept this and come to terms with it. And actually, when you think about it, this is a very good thing. We should embrace it. We want to be involved in the environment that is providing us with work that is both important and valuable. I think of the alternative. Very little work with no priority on getting it done and no real value in what is being delivered. But that result in less stress or more, particularly in 2023 and the economic climate we're all living in. And the point is that we need to get comfortable with this fact and do something about it. Learn to prioritise. This will reduce our anxiety and allow us to work on the right thing at the right time. Now, if John Lydgate was coining phrases in our agile world today, he may well have said, you need to please the right people, customers, at the right time, all of the time. We do this by using a prioritisation technique. At its basic level, it's just a list of work ordered by rank of importance. How we decide on this ranking is by communicating and collaborating with our team, stakeholders and leadership to gain the insight needed in order to answer questions such as what business value does this have? How quickly must it be delivered? Does it reduce risk or provide opportunity? How big and complex is it to deliver? Among many others. And the answer to these questions might sometimes be, I don't know, and that's okay. We're not in this alone. So we need to reach out to the people who can help. Now, sometimes prioritization might yield surprising results, so sense check them. If you know that a piece of work is clearly the top priority, but it comes last when you use a prioritization technique due to its size and complexity, then break the work down and rerun. Prioritization will help you to work on the right thing at the right time, and it reduces stress, fatigue, and anxiety. Now, something that stops people from truly prioritizing work is that it often leads to an ever-expanding backlog. So you end up with a list of 100, 200 things which you'll never end up doing. And having to have those difficult conversations with stakeholders when you have to tell them that you aren't going to work on their project as you've got higher priority items. You end up just responding to whoever shouts the loudest or has the most seniority. Now, here is a radical thought. Do you even need a backlog? I remember the movie, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Well, think about shrinking your backlog or even getting rid of it completely. I mean, what good are they anyway if you're just going to have a list of 500 items on it, most of which you will never deliver? What is the point in that? I think about it. Does your product backlog reduce to zero in three to six months or does it in fact actually grow? Look. I think most of us would say that the backlog is actually bigger after six months, not smaller, and certainly not at zero, because we have trouble saying no to our stakeholders. And this causes issues, because we know that when we had new features all the time, the chance of getting them done are very low, particularly if they're still in the backlog after six months. So what impression does a stakeholder get when we never deliver? Not a good one. And we start to get a bad reputation for non-delivery and we lose trust. So why not delete your backlog completely? Think about it, what would happen? You'd survive because you would remember your top priority work. So why not be goal orientated instead? Take a tip from Jeff Bezos when he was at Amazon and used day one thinking. Basically, you imagine you're a startup and focus on the most important things your customers need. Think about why you exist, your mission and strategy and focus on that. Repeat this process every quarter and delete your backlog again. Repeat your startup day one thinking. Now, you can do this with a product goal or you could use OKRs. But if you use OKRs, don't fall into the trap of creating your OKRs from your previous product backlog. That is a pointless exercise. So understand the vision of the product or service you're trying to deliver and work out a list of goals you need to achieve in order to realize the vision. And then just prioritize those goals. Time box the whole thing to run every three months, then rinse and repeat. Now, don't worry about the stories needed for each sprint. Look, the team are perfectly capable of working out all the tasks needed in order to achieve a goal if it's well explained and understood. 
And prioritization is also the first step to help you limit your work in progress and reduce your context switching. Now, all that time you spend managing the backlog, bouncing from one piece of work to the next, ask yourself honestly, what does it actually achieve? So stop starting and start finishing. Understand the vision and set the goals. There's no need to make this more difficult than it has to be. Now, check this video out to see how and why it's important to say no to items entering your backlog. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And it also helps our Agile community. OK, that is it for this one. Have a great day. Stay safe, stay humble. And I will see you next Thursday for another Agile Thought.